Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of PyTorch Community Voices. I'm your host uh, for today, Suraj. And um, welcome, uh, everyone who's joining us. Uh, for people who are joining us for the first time, uh, PyTorch Community Voices is a weekly show where every Wednesday we invite members from the PyTorch community to talk about the projects that they've been working on and just share uh, their knowledge with the rest of the community. And for those of us who have uh, who have been here before, welcome back. Uh, it's good to uh, have you again. Um, I hope this is going to be an interesting episode for you um, as well. Uh, I think it is going to be because we have guests from Qualcomm, um, experts in edge devices, and um, they're going to be telling us a little about how they deal with model compression and just generally model efficiency. Uh, like, as, as you might know, edge devices have very strict uh, constraints on the size of models and uh, how much power they can uh, consume or while running their inferences. So uh, I'm sure this is going to be very exciting for people who are in the space and also people who are looking to just uh, make their models run faster and more efficiently. So um, I'd like to uh, bring on Abhi and Chirag from Qualcomm. Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, hi, Suresh. Hi, hey, it's great to have you uh, on the episode. Thank you for taking the time out today. Um, Abhi and Charag, um, I'd like uh, uh, if you could introduce yourselves uh, to our audience very quickly. Abhi, maybe you can start. Hey, thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Abhi Kobre. So I'm part of uh, Qualcomm AI Research, and I am like the software lead for this uh, AI model efficiency toolkit, uh, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, yeah, we, it's been an interesting journey at Qualcomm. I, in the past, I used to work on modem projects and sort of transitioned into this ML field uh, about three years back. And it's been an interesting journey so far. Thanks, Abhi. Uh, Chirag, would you like to go? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chirag Patel. I'm principal engineer manager at Qualcomm AI Research, uh, Qualcomm Corporate R&D. Uh, I lead the overall AMI, uh, AI model efficiency toolkit uh, project, uh, working closely with Avi and the team here, trying to bring out best performance for inference on the edge devices. So yeah, we are excited to be here. Uh, thanks, Suraj. Uh, thanks, PyTorch community for having us here. I'm looking forward to an interesting discussion. Thank you, Chirag, and thanks, Avi, for uh, introducing yourselves. Um, uh, just briefly, uh, the way the this, these episodes are formatted is um, um, now the stage is going to be all yours and you will be presenting on AMET. And once your presentation is done, we'll be opening up the floor to Q&A from the audience. So uh, people in the audience, please uh, keep posting your questions or comments or honestly anything that you'd like to share with the rest of the community or with Abhi and Chirag. This is a great time. It's a great opportunity to directly speak with uh, the people who are working firsthand on uh, these libraries and these techniques. So please feel free to post in your comments, your questions in the chat, and we'll get to them as soon as uh, the presentation is done. All right. Um, that being said, Abhi and Chirag, the floor is all yours. Uh, please take yeah. it away. Yeah, thank you, Suresh. Uh, so I'll just start first. Uh, I'll give a very high level introduction on what AMIT is, what features we have, the benefits. And then Abhi will talk a bit more on the software architecture, uh, how it can be used uh, by PyTorch users, and uh, how it can benefit. Uh, so, so Suraj briefly mentioned right, the need for edge uh, efficiency. And you can see like uh, all of us are very familiar with deep learning here. Uh, the, it has had a profound impact uh, on all our lives. We see them on smartphones, we see deep learning applications on IoT devices, in self-driving cars, and as the applications evolve, what we are seeing is like the model complexity keeps on growing. Here, this graph just a visualization of like how the energy consumption and equivalently like the size of the models also keeps on growing, right? Like uh, earlier this year, there was a switch transformer model with billions of parameters released. Every few months, we see a new model taking the record for the complexity. And at the same time, what, what this complexity brings is like, oh, uh, you need to have better compute, a more energy efficient compute, so that you can uh, make your applications run at edge devices. 
Now, if you look at the chart here, right, like with the projections that saying by 2025, the model complexities will approach the human brain in terms of number of synapses. Uh, so how do you address, like how do you run this kind of complex networks efficiently? Uh, that's a big challenge and that's where AMET comes in. Like typically, like what we see is like for improving edge inference, techniques like quantization compression are used. So we are going to focus more on quantization here. Uh, AMET is uh, support for quantization and compression techniques. So quantization clearly has uh, good benefits. Like what I mean by quantization really, right? So typically when we train a network in PyTorch, we have floating point weights, floating point activations, and that's how we train the model. Now, when you take it to an edge device, uh, typically like uh, there are fixed point accelerators, AI accelerators on the edge devices, which are more power efficient. And that's where quantization comes in. You want to quant quantize the floating point weights to either 8-bit integer weights or 16-bit or even in future 4-bit integer weights, right? And what this does is like it can bring significant uh, speed up on the latency benefits as well as energy benefits. So for example, if we, instead of running the model in 32-bit floating point, if we run it in, at 8-bit, right? Like uh, we would see up to 16x in performance per power watt improvement uh, for the edge inference. Now, uh, you can push this further, like you can go to four bits, you can even get up to 64x benefits versus running this on the floating point. Right? We know on smartphones, say, battery is important. We have limited memory capacity. So quantization bring uh, solve these issues. The model size becomes smaller. You can deploy better models you know, because the models are becoming more compact. The energy saving comes because we, we are like, doing fixed point arithmetic and also like the data movement becomes uh, less costly. So there are benefits to quantization and Qualcomm is at the forefront of quantization research. Uh, our research has been highlighted into like a lot of uh, top tier public uh, conferences. Like uh, for example, in 2019, we had the data free quantization technique that said state of the art intake performance or like post-training quantization. By post-training, I mean without any fine tuning. Recently, we had released like uh, adaptive rounding scheme uh, I'll talk more about it later. So that pushes the envelope further to even four bits. And then the work on Bayesian bits like allows you to mix and match the bit bits to get the best accuracy uh, and the uh, latency trade-offs. So and uh, the key here is like uh, this is coming not just research, right? But what we are focusing on is like oh, drive the research, get the best performance, and then how do we bring this research to the community? And that's where AMET comes in. Like we have released all these innovations for the broader use by the community in form of AI model affinity toolkit or AMET. Now we, uh, we have also have an accompanying AMET model too. So AMET is a product of Qualcomm Innovation Center. Like uh, uh, they have been helpful in releasing it and making it available to the general public. So what what really is AMET? Right? Like uh, in nutshell, AMET goal or mission is to make AI models small. So you can take a model, run it on an edge device and get better performance. Uh, we have, please check out our GitHub as well. Like uh, we will talk more on that. Uh, in essence, what AMET has like compression and quantization algorithms inside. And the way it will work is like you have a model to either train in TensorFlow or PyTorch, a floating point model. You can invoke AMET's algorithms uh, and then get an optimized model out. And this more optimized model, like it will be better, more friendlier for quantization, or it will be a compressed model. Again, it will bring you benefits for the on-target inference. You know, from the AMET optimized model, that can be deployed on like multitude of like uh, devices, whether like uh, smartphones or auto applications or like IoT devices, through traditional like uh, runtime deployment tools. Like uh, Qualcomm also has like a neural SDK, uh, also known as Snappy, Snapdragon neural SDK. So that can also be used. Uh, it complements the AMET um, for the runtime. So to give a high level view of like what a, uh, features are in AMET and what kind of benefits it brings. So broadly, you can think of features in quantization bucket, compression, and visualization. So on quantization, we have state-of-the-art techniques for integer rate and integer four for our performance. So broadly, we have two sets of techniques, post-training techniques, which are a bit more easier, like uh, users don't need to fine tune the model again once they have trained the model from the scratch. So we have methods to enable that, like uh, for data free foundation or cross-layer equalization and uh, adaptive rounding. 
sometimes we are also understand post training may not be enough like we, we, users may need to fine tune the models to take care of the contention noise that's where contention aware training comes in and together with uh, these techniques we under underlying uh, we have contention simulation which enables you to predict oh, when i take it to the target what will be my performance uh, approximately right so they did give the user a good understanding Oh, my floating point performance was this. When I quantize, I'm going to get this performance. I'm happy or not. So the AMI enables that. In the compression front, we have tensor decomposition techniques like a spatial SVD. Uh, so it will do factorization of, like, say, convolution uh, tensor uh, to make it more efficient. Uh, other uh, technique we have is channel pruning. So it uh, re removes some of the redundant channels. We know not not all the channels in a convolution layer play an equal role in the, in the given task, for example. So AMIT can automatically find out which channels are very, uh, redundant, and then it can prune them away. Uh, finally, we have visualization. So visualization is more for like uh, giving deeper insights to the user, like for, uh, also for debugging purposes. If their contention is not working for some reason, or they want to understand what is the model behavior look like in terms of weight statistics. So we, we, we have tools to give, give this kind of insights. For compression also, we enable like giving oh, which layers are more comprehensible, uh, what is the sensitivity to compression. So those kind of analysis users can do, and they can even uh, tweak around few things after that uh, in, once they draw these insights uh, from AMIT. So with all these features, right, like uh, they, they bring a rich set of benefits, like uh, you can do quantization, get lower power benefit, uh, we reduce the storage requirement, memory bandwidth gets reduced. And all of this comes like uh, with a great ease of use. Well, we will talk more how we architected software, made it a bit more easier for users to uh, use with their existing pipelines, right? So uh, it comes with a good set of benefits. So briefly, I want to talk also on like AMIT models. Uh, so AMIT, as I mentioned, is a library of compression condition techniques. And then uh, the proof is in the pudding, right? What do these techniques buy you? So that is what the AMIT model zoo does. Like we have released a bunch of models there uh, across the broad range of use cases, classific image classification, segmentation, even speech recognition like, uh, kind of models. I am shown that, oh, compared to the floating point model, the integer eight models for all these uh, use cases, the performance is very comparable. And then uh, users are free to uh, use that. Just to hi highlight the performance that we see on the models of uh, what we have, then we have a bunch of TensorFlow models, PyTorch models. Like, let, let, let's look on the PyTorch side here. Like, you can see MobileNet V2, efficient and light, like state of the art networks, uh, super resolution networks, or deep speech 2 kind of speech networks. Here, we are plotting, uh, showing like what is the impact or the reduction in accuracy from the floating point. And, Generally, we are within 1%, which is acceptable to, uh, drop compared to the floating point. So well, this clearly shows like AMET techniques can be beneficial. They can maintain accuracy. And then when you go to on target, you will see the inference benefits as well. So I talk about two of the techniques I mentioned, like uh, one is a cross layer equalization or data free quantization, what you call. So it's a post-training technique enabling in intent inference. We, uh, un underneath the CLE, there are a bunch of operations that go through, like uh, cross layer equalization. Sometimes what we see is like the weight parameters are not um, uh, for across different channels in a convolution layer. They have varying dynamic range. So and this is not friendly to quantization. If one channel has like low range while the other has a higher range, then quantization uh, performance will suffer because then quantization has to accommodate all these wider range. Right? So this technique tries to equalize these ranges by some mathematical tricks, and then we can quantize the weights, uh, estimate the activation ranges. Finally, all these operations happen under the hood with like a simple API call that AMIT has, and you can see like we can or mobile at V2, rest at 50, deep lab V3, which is semantic segmentation task, uh, image to image. Uh, we are, we are able to return very good performance, like less than 1% versus SP32. So this was more about Intet. Uh, I also want to talk about uh, Int4. So Intet is there today. There are a lot of like accelerators from Qualcomm and other companies also use Intet. So that clearly these techniques are applicable and bring good benefits. 
We are pushing the envelope further, like uh, we have an adaptive rounding technique, uh, add around. So that is shown to give great performance for both integer eight and also integer four for uh, quite a few, a few of the networks there. So I'm going to show, uh, play a video quickly and see. Uh, let me know if you can uh, see it properly. So this is an adaptive rounding technique. Uh, so generally what happens in quantization, let's say you have this quantization grid, right? Like a uniform quantization grid. Uh, typically, uh, we will do rounding to nearest. Like, uh, if the value was here, we'll quantize it down to like, oh, typically if the value was here, we'll quantize to the nearest uh, grid point. But is it the optimal thing to do? So there, our researchers ask this question and show that, oh, that's not always the case. You better do some sort of adaptive rounding. And that's how our technique comes in. So it's a, it does a it again a post training technique does not require model fine tuning. It minimizes the loss uh, described here, and that finds oh, what's the best way for a given weight value? How should we round it? Round it actually down or up? And there is, just showing some example results here, right? Like uh, for object detection, which is a for an autonomous driving use case, uh, and it's an internal model we have. Floating point performance, like MAP 82.2. If you just do blindly nearest rounding of a body done typically, 8 bit weights, 8 bit activations, performance significantly degrades, but add around is able to recover it. And then now let's look on the right hand side here with a deep lab V3 model. So then floating point performance 72.9 for IOU. Uh, nearest rounding, if you go to 4 bit weights, 4 bits is clearly very challenging for this kind of task. So performance suffers. But with add around, you can see the performance is pretty close. It's you, you see slight degradation for sure, but uh, at the same time, like it's not very far off, right? Uh, I'll show you some visual uh, comparisons as well. And quality, so that qualitatively, you will see that the, the performance is still acceptable and uh, similar, comparable to FP32. So let me play the video briefly. Uh, forward it uh, yeah okay so yeah the, the, just to set the stage uh, we are first going to show object detection use case uh, for uh, adas applications so these are real real, real, real world uh, footage we have come like uh, the testing here so you can see basically like if you do intake based object detection here like a lot of uh, errors are made like for example, here it's an incorrect classifier of motorcycle. Some of the vehicles are classified as unknown. But with add around integer eight performance, you can see like uh, the classes are well identified. Uh, no mystery, uh, like uh, false detections. So this clearly shows add around can bring good benefits for the intake. I'll continue to play like yeah, this is another example where you can see regular quantization even with integer eight will make some errors. The truck is identified as a car while add around is the right job here. Even the bounding boxes are a bit tighter, you can see, right? Like, uh, yeah, there's a similar example here. Uh, again, like add around integer performance is great. Uh, no, no, no errors really. So let me skip ahead to the uh, four bit now. We are talking about a four bit quantization. So these are semantic segmentation model. So is an FP32, like you will see segmentation mask around the people. The, we are trying to identify chair, bicycle person in these videos. So you can see a blue mask here. And yeah, so maybe just focus on this slide. Or uh, integer four, like you can see a uh, lot of uh, people are missed. Like there's no mask here essentially, or even like a misclassified. But to add around integer four, uh, we can see all the people are segmented correctly. And th that shows really the benefits of add around. Okay, so I think I'll skip over and uh, let Abhi drive the, 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 the next of the presentation. Uh, so Abhi, uh, I'll share my screen. Hey, thanks, Jarak. So yeah, this slide is showing like the sort of architecture for AMIT, uh, that very high level picture. Um, and so what AMIT is designed to work with uh, both PyTorch and TensorFlow frameworks, uh, but you know the techniques themselves that you know Chirag mentioned, they are kind of common. So I think there is a common repository of 
an optimization library that uh, on top there are you know different extensions for different frameworks. Um, yeah, and what the arrow to the right is showing is, in theory, you can you know extend it to other frameworks if you directly invoke the underlying you know, library. Uh, we'll look at the APIs a little bit uh, in a separate slide. Let's keep going. So uh, one of the things for quantization is, uh, you know, you you can take a model to target, and you you know then you run it on target, then you see an inf inference uh, accuracy, and it uh, sort of that that's the time you know that you know something is wrong. So you ideally want to do this like off off target, uh, simulate the accuracy off target. And so what this is showing is, you know, uh, Amit has good tools for simulating uh, accuracy off target, and we see that you know compared to um, uh, we've done comparisons with Qualcomm targets, like Snapdragon-based targets. We get very close uh, simulated accuracy to on-target accuracy. And the reason it, it becomes close is because uh, there are these simulation ops that are added to simulate noise, uh, quantization noise. Those simulation ops are like placed at the right points in the model, and uh, they are um, uh, also configured the right way. So like configuration may, may mean like symmetric versus asymmetric quantization, you know, th things like those. And then the placement is, interestingly, we sort of configured it so that uh, there's a configuration file which we explain uh, in the tool. And, you know, you could sort of modify that configuration file for a specific target, right? To say, okay, in this case, it's showing like a convolution and ReLU layers get fused by the runtime. And so, you know, you sort of don't, simulate noise at the output of the convolution. So that's what that is saying. So uh, this is an interesting sort of feature that I think may be useful for mapping, you know, AMET for simulation for different, different targets. So uh, the API, the, uh, you know, the intent of the slide is to show that uh, AMET, like, has been designed to work at the level of the training framework, like PyTorch. So, um, you know, you take in, like in this case, you are taking like a Torch Vision ResNet 18 model, and uh, the cross layer equalization technique that Chirag, you know, talked about earlier in a previ previous slide. So that's what this single API, you know, essentially does. Uh, you pass in the model and like an input shape uh, for us to infer the graph, graph structure of the model. Uh, but it in this API, it's going to like sort of equalize the model in place. Uh, so I think it's been designed to have simple APIs for the users to invoke. They, they don't need to be, you know, uh, it's not very complicated. They don't need to figure out which layers to equalize and, and so on and so forth. Uh, all that gets done automatically under the hood. And then the other thing to note is as the APIs get invoked, you get back, you know, a, a PyTorch model. So uh, like, let's take the three lines in the bottom. Uh, so here we are taking, you know, that equalized model and we are creating a simulation model out of it with these simulation option. And so when we evaluate the model, uh, you can get like quantized evaluation, like a simulation of quantized evaluation. And to, uh, if you see the way this is designed as the simulated model, that sim dot model is still a PyTorch model, first class, you can do all kinds of PyTorch APIs with it, print it, uh, so on, anything that you can do with the PyTorch model. And so you can also plug it in into your existing evaluate model. So that evaluate model is like, let's say, an existing pipeline for evaluation. You can just plug that in there. So I think it's been designed. Both of these things help, I think, for uh, user friendliness, we believe. Yeah, and in addition to this, we have added some visualization. So this is showing one example of it, uh, again, with that cross-layer equalization feature. Uh, and it's showing like if you can see the light green and light blue is showing like the uh, sort of dynamic range of the channels before the equalization and the dark green, the one in the middle is showing the equal, uh, you know, the channels after they have been equalized. Uh, so this is one example. Uh, there are other visualizations that we have uh, added for compression, also for quantization to look at like uh, histogram ranges of you know different points in the model and so on and so forth. So all of these uh, we feel are very useful for the users to uh, you know see what is going on. So we so diagnose what's going on. 
Yeah, and so this is a summary thing. So, you know, it's uh, AMET supports both compression and quantization. And if you see, saw from the quantization, uh, you know, uh, features we described, uh, th yeah, these are state of the art features. These are like a little bit on top of, you know, what features uh, are present in other frameworks. Um, and so I think the combination of that with, you know, uh, you know, quantization simulation and uh, basic quantization uh, schemes. I think that combination makes it very a nice uh, turnkey tool. And you can actually combine these quantization and compression uh, techniques as well. I think AMET supports it. The reason it supports it is because you know you invoke one API, you get back a PyTorch model. So you can sort of stitch multiple like techniques together. And we have some guidelines on what how you can stitch it in our documentation and supports both PyTorch and TensorFlow models. Um, yeah, and we are like sort of, the research keeps going on as you saw from Chirak's uh, previous slide, the re, you know, uh, our research continues and we sort of keep bringing, you know, parts of that research which are promising into this uh, tool. Yeah, so we uh, have, uh, this is an open source project. Um, that's the URL over there. And so it's brought to you from the Qualcomm Innovation Center. So that's what QUIC stands for. Um, yeah, we we would love to like hear back from you or uh, have contributions from you. I think we are a relatively smaller team. So I think you know to uh, increase the span of this pro uh, project and like make it more uh, useful for different different use cases. We you know we would really love if people come in and contribute. Uh, so please do that. Yeah, so Chirag, is, is this a point we stop and like ask uh, possible so, questions? Chirag, yeah, I think uh, that was uh, it for our side. Uh, we'd love to take Q&A uh, and address questions from the audience. All right. Um, thank you, Abhi and Chirag, for that very enlightening presentation. Um, for people who are joining us now or who uh, joined in while the presentation was going on, um, Abhi and Chirag spoke about their library from Qualcomm AI called AMET. And AMET is a toolkit for model efficiency, and that includes compression, that is reducing the size of your, of your model's layers, and quantization uh, to reduce the precision of the uh, weights and other parameters um, in your model. And uh, we just saw a few examples of how um, uh, AMET can help uh, make your model run faster. And now we are entering the uh, live Q&A section. Um, so uh, please feel free to post in your questions uh, from the presentation in the chat, and we'll get to them um, as you post them. So um, Surajit has the first question for today. Uh, and thanks for asking this, Surajit. Uh, this was something that even I was uh, curious about. Um, Abhi and Chirag, you. Uh, we spoke about examples where the models were vision models or image models. Um, so Rajit uh, wonders if the same techniques are available for NLP uh, transformers like BERT and T5. Uh, so a very good question. Uh, we are actually working on enabling transformer support uh, as we speak. So maybe in the next few months, uh, you, you will hear from us on the, that front. Uh, currently, it's a models. Uh, a follow up to that, if I may, uh, is it very different when you're designing compression techniques for uh, vision models versus NLP or even other modalities? Uh, so uh, we are looking at quantization of transformer networks, and generally techniques are very similar. The quantization of our training does not change in principle, right? So what we need to ensure is like the way transformer models are written, we aim is able to ingest that, handle that, in, insert the condition ops at the right places as we mentioned. Right? So we need to do some homework on that front and then uh, all the techniques uh, benefits should be carried over. Yeah, I would um, like to add also like we uh, did support like uh, other architectures like recurrent model architectures. I think those are also used in uh, NLP like applications. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, so some of the complexities of you know handling these uh, transformers or recurrent models is because they are more complex uh, layers, if you may. Uh, and so we got to, yeah, the challenge is to sort of figure out okay, where do we need to simulate uh, quantization? So if you see in PyTorch, you may see like a uh, 
LSTM layer. Uh, but under the hood, there are a whole bunch of operations it does, and including the time steps. But uh, you know, you, they could be stacked as well, and e even including a single time step has multiple like matrix multiplies in it. So if you see from a quantized target perspective, you know, every time you do a, a heavy operation, a matrix multiply operation, you have to like tile it. And then you have to take it back into memory, at which point you have to like decimate it or you know, quantize it. Uh, so yeah, this all, all of the, the complexity is in like understanding where to simulate the noise and like appropriately simulate the noise and do it in the context of PyTorch so that you get back a sort of a PyTorch uh, model. So the short answer is very soon. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Surajit, uh, for that question. Um, I I was also wondering uh, if I may. Uh, you mentioned two uh, very broad uh, groups of techniques. Uh, one being compression, and the other being quantization. And um, I was wondering, like, uh, do uh, does either of these techniques um, are they? more suitable for any particular kind of architectures or um, maybe like what's the theory or what's the intuition if you may uh, when uh, people sh that people should use when they're deciding whether to do compression or quantization or even potentially a mixture of both uh, great question Surat. so you see quantization is the must have if you want to run on fixed point accelerator there is no getting away from using quantization right so quantization should be done regardless, basically. Again, then you can pick the technique. Start with the post-training technique. If you're happy with the accuracy, done. If not, then you will have to do QAT, right? Uh, so quantization should be done regardless is what I would say. Now, coming to compression, that's a bit interesting one. Uh, we have seen like uh, it can give good benefit like uh, on models like ResNet 50. Uh, yeah, like the model is a bit more over-parameterized. Then shrink it down to 50% using what we the techniques we have, and still maintain accuracy within 1%. For those kind of networks, compression techniques are good. But now again, the mileage varies depending on the model. If the model is already very optimized, like think of like mobile at V2, right? It's a uh, designed for mobile uses. It's quite compact to start with. Then maybe the compression will not buy you much. So it all boils down to if like uh, the model was a bit more over parameterized. A lot of time, what people do like they will just start with a larger model, right, regardless, that they want to get the accuracy first. So in those cases, compression should be tried out, like our convolution networks, the first thing, yeah, you can try out compression. And then uh, once you are happy with the compression result, oh, you have compressed the model, then quantization should be done so that finally you know when you take it to the fixed point inference, uh, quantization performance also will be good. So at least that's how I, would, I see the pipeline. Yeah. In addition, like I would add, like for the compression part that Chirag mentioned, uh, so there are uh, some visualizations, uh, you know, a part of this toolkit where you get like a, a curve, a sort of compressibility curve, if you may. So you can sort of identify which, you know, given a model, which are your uh, layers sensitive to compression, for example. Uh, so you you can, and th that will kind of give you an idea, like if, you know, all of your layers are super sensitive to compression, maybe your model is not a great candidate for compression to begin with. So yeah, the mileage varies. Uh, also in quantization, you have, you know, uh, possibility of using different precision. So you could, you know, so that's a, you know, quantized targets, depending on what is supported, you may have like, you know, 16 bit kernels versus 8 bit kernels. So you could even have different bit widths for activations and weights. Uh, and then, you know, you may, for future like targets, you may want to experiment with other bit widths like four bits, for example. So uh, yeah, these, uh, I think the one, this is one of the things that I like about Emet is because it lets you play with these things. You can change bit widths at different layers, uh, weights versus activations. So any tensor you see, you could set a different bit width if you may, and sort of uh, get that benefit. And also try bit widths that uh, may not be supported on uh, you know hardware today. Like for example, you could in theory try four bits, or you could even try seven bits. It's uh, it allows you that flexibility to do this experimentation, so you understand. Then you can use those uh, information to like plan out for the future. So so essentially, just like with just about everything in machine learning, uh, we need to empirically investigate and see whether it works for us. 
Yeah, that's a good point. I think there is, uh, so there is empirical experimentation, but also, um, yeah, we continue to like research techniques. Like I think uh, Chirag was mentioning this uh, technique we are researching to see, can we automatically figure out this mixed precision scenario? Right? Right. So this is, you know, not uh, today in AMET, I think you can do sort of manual experiments, but uh, yeah, we hope to bring some of this in. Yeah. So, uh, you know, start start with empirical and then go on to like more smarter techniques. So more and more automation. Right? I think of the nearest rounding, right? It was a de, de facto nearest rounding, but now, okay, people don't need to manually try out, right? Oh, I should round up or down. Or add around will do it for them. So, yeah. I, as you mentioned, the envelope continues to be pushed as we go, go along. So, you're using more and more automation, ease of use coming in for the user. So, the, like, they don't have to worry about oh, five different post training techniques and such. Uh, speaking about pushing envelopes, um, I I don't think I have used int for quantization anywhere. Um, I haven't. I don't think I I have personally come across that before as well. Um, is this supported on um, all the all the silicon that we have right now, or is this more future facing? Uh, good question, Suraj. So this is more future facing. Uh, we want to be ready. Have the tools available for people. People can actually try out oh, which models can actually run in for so they can be prepared when the time comes for the silicons. Right. Very interesting. Um, folks, just another reminder. Um, if you have questions about what Abhi and Chirag are speaking of, namely model compression and quantization um, and their toolkit AMET, please post that in the uh, in the chat. We do have time for just a few more questions. Um, Sidive asks if, um, if AMIT, I'm guessing what they're asking is if AMIT works well with Onyx, uh, Onyx models and, um, uh, Onyx runtime. So yeah, let me take this. So, yeah, so, uh, we, you know, like I said, like, let's say we take model compression and model quantization as two separate use cases. So the end result of you know both of these use cases is you get back a PyTorch model, uh, and then you could you can exp export or convert this PyTorch model into Onyx just using you know Torch Onyx export. Um, in the quantization case, there is you know sort of uh, additional meta information for the scale offsets uh, that uh, the quantization grid parameters that need to be sent out. So th those are sent as a meta, but yeah, we we can convert. Everything you know results of AMET into Onyx, and that's actually how uh, we are you know currently deploying on uh, Snapdragon targets, for example, to convert it to Onyx and then sort of have the runtimes import in Onyx. So we yeah I think Onyx runtime is something we have tried a bit, but not like experts in it. But uh, yeah, should I, I would think it should work there as well. Thank you, Saidai, for that question. Um, and if you do end up trying um, AMET with Onyx Runtime, please feel free to raise any uh, feedback or issues on uh, the GitHub repo. Yeah. Um, just one uh, quick uh, question to round around this um, Q&A. Um, so PyTorch does have a namespace for quantization uh, uh, abilities. And within that, there's uh, three different ways uh, we run quantization. There's dynamic quantization, where the um, where the activations are quantized. Uh, there's static quantization, and then there's QAT. Um, ca can you maybe comment on how AMET compares with this? Does it use the same intrinsics, or is it built on uh, some other uh, components altogether? Yeah, that's a good good question, Suraj. Uh, so, yeah, I think when AMIT sort of started, uh, I, I think the PyTorch quantization uh, support uh, was, I think, minimal or uh, non-existent at that time. But I think PyTorch has come a long way. Um, and so I, I think of at a high level, I think AMIT provides, uh, you know, some additional techniques to what uh, PyTorch has. So we looked at these optimization techniques like add around or cross layer equalization uh, and yeah and then there is qat i think so pytorch uh, built in quantization has qat so i think there is some sort of overlap a little bit but then there are other techniques which are you know more uh, some advanced techniques in amet 
So yeah, in I believe that you know I think a met set of techniques are like maybe a a broader set than what PyTorch uh, supports today. And I I know I think PyTorch conversation is evolving. So uh, yeah, we would love to see uh, you know more uh, sort of uh, opportunities to collaborate or see how we can reuse you know stuff uh, that is already part of the conversation framework and build on top of it. Uh, so that that continues to be our focus going forward. Yeah. But you see, like we talked about int four, we talked about you know uh, this mixed precision use cases, and so I think there are a lot of uh, other angles that I think Amet brings to the table. Yes, I I agree. Um, from my uh, from my cursory perusal of uh, Amet and the features that it brings, I do uh, I do agree that this is a very valuable uh, addition to what PyTorch already does with quantization and. Um, if uh, any of our viewers are um, interested in this space, I would highly encourage them to check it out. Uh, the techniques are, um, they, they can, I, I feel like they can definitely supplement um, very well with what uh, PyTorch does in quantization as well. All right, uh, we are almost uh, close to the end of our uh, episode. Uh, before, uh, before I let Abhi and Shara go, I'd like to ask them uh, this question that uh, we generally ask most of our guests. Um, can you tell us one feature in PyTorch that you maybe you really like a lot, or maybe it just made your work very easy when uh, you were trying to build AMET, you know, from an engineering perspective, any components in PyTorch that uh, just made your life easier? So, uh, yeah, let me start. So. I yeah, I think uh, one of the things that tool like AMET, both for compression and quantization, like we kind of need to know the sort of graph structure uh, of models. And, you know, it's the great architectural choice for PyTorch to have dynamic graphs. Uh, but I think, yeah, for tools like AMET, I think we sort of need to know the rendered version of the graph, if you may, to understand, you know, what, what layers are surrounding what other layers. And so we can like take decisions based on that. So I think there are features in uh, PyTorch that we really use, uh, uh, like tracing. Uh, and so we have used that part of the code quite a bit. And we sort of actually use that trace to uh, infer another IR, if you may, so that we can uh, you know, you, you know, so w whatever we needed. Uh, but most recently, I think uh, there has been, uh, I was talking to one of your uh, engineers, James Reed, uh, back uh, in New Rips and also I think in the uh, ecosystem day. And so I think you added these features, torch effects. Uh, and I think this is a, this is what we are currently exploring. I think it's a very, very valuable, I think, uh, tool for us. Uh, and I, I think it's, it's a valuable tool for PyTorch quantization as well. So, um, yeah, we, we would love to see how, how we can use this both to understand the graph structure, but also to make like modifications and like do graph transformations. Right. Um, thank you so much for that, Abhi. And thank you, Chirag and Abhi, for taking the time out today uh, to speak with us about AMET. Um, I am very sure that a lot of our audience has is going to be walking away learning a lot more about, about this space. Um, for those of us who have uh, who were not able to join us live, um, but who might be viewing this video async, uh, feel free to still drop in your questions because um, I will be reaching out to Abhi and Chirag offline with your questions and um, I can post those their answers in the comments. So um, don't hold back just because you were not able to attend this live. Um, do post in your questions. Um, that is very valuable to uh, the rest of the community as well. So um, post it in and I will, uh, I'll work with Abhi and Chirag to get you those answers. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. This is an awesome experience, Suraj. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank yeah, you, again. Thank you for joining us. All right. See you, see you. until bye -bye. next time. Yeah, bye-bye.